Hey guys, welcome back to Office Hours with the Professor, the show where I say things. Tonight, historical badass Chinese bros, part four, Sun Yat-sen. Let's talk first about the 19th century. As we can see, this guy Sun Yat-sen was born in the 19th century. So the 19th century was not a good time for China. You know, a lot of Chinese historians use the term century of humiliation to, to describe the period between the Opium Wars in the 1830s and the end of World War II. And China, mainly due to corruption and political chauvinism on the part of the ruling Qing Dynasty, had seriously fallen behind the West. Let's write that down, Qing Dynasty. And they'd seriously fallen behind the West in terms of technological and economic development, okay? And as a result, China became a victim of Western imperialism. In fact, I shouldn't even say Western imperialism because Japan even got involved following its modernization in the 1870s. And of course, this culminated in the Japanese Imperial Army committing some of the most horrific war crimes in human history against the Chinese during World War II. In the 1850s and 60s, there was the Taiping Rebellion, okay? So, 1850s and 60s, we have the Taiping Rebellion. And this was, this was a horrendous conflict. Um, this, this rebellion swept across southern China and, and displaced and killed millions and millions of people. Taiping, incidentally, uh, actually translates as extremely peaceful, which is an interesting name for a conflict that killed over twice as many people as World War I. In the midst of all this chaos, there emerged a man of vision and dedication who believed in his nation when no one else seemed to. This man's name was Sun Zhongshan, who is commonly known in the West by, by one of his other names, Sun Yat-sen. Okay? Now, so, so since we're speaking English, and we'll, we'll just say Sun Yat-sen for now, but in China, he is known as Sun Zhongshan. So if you ever talk about him with a Chinese friend, maybe uh, you, would, you would call him Sun Zhongshan in, in the Chinese language. Sun Yat-sen was one of those rare individuals whose ideals were just too far ahead of his time and as a result he was not nearly as successful as he should have been. Now Sun Yat-sen was born in 1866 and he was born in China but he grew up in Hawaii all right and in Hawaii he was exposed to Western education. Hawaii and he grew up in Hawaii and he was exposed to, to Western education, Western thought, and actually he even converted to Congregationalist Christianity. And he returned in China uh, just in time to see China get completely obliterated in the First Sino-Japanese War and then get carved up by foreign powers in the 1890s. So. Uh, he, he, he went back to China just in time to see some of the darkest hours of this century of humiliation. So he was very frustrated at the Qing dynasty's incompetence and their inability to defend the nation and defend their people. So Sun advocated revolution and setting up a democratic form of government like he had seen in, in for example, some of the, the, the West. Now, uh, you know, a cool idea, his friend said, but who's going to lead this great revolution? Who's going to lead it? You? And of course, that's exactly what he did. After a few false starts, in 1912, Sun Yat-sen overthrew the Qing dynasty and established the Republic of China. Okay? And this is important too, so we're going to write that down. The Republic of China.
We can also say the ROC, okay? And the Republic of China is a state that continues to this day in Taiwan and continues to be recognized by some countries as the legitimate government, the sole legitimate government of all China. Uh, now, the Republic of China, we can also say ROC, right? So we talked a little about this in my uh, What's the Deal with Taiwan video. So go back and check that out if you like. Now, Sun Yat-sen was the founder of the Republic of China, and he struggled, Sun Yat-sen struggled for the next decade to make a free, just, and strong China, ultimately dying before his goal was accomplished in 1925. So, Sun Yat-sen worked hard to achieve this goal of a, of a free country in China and, and a, a, a stable and... and um, a, a strong country, but ultimately he died before he could achieve this goal, which is very sad. Now, Sun was guided, he had this great philosophy, and he was guided by what he called the three principles of the people, okay? And in China, Chinese, sorry, that's uh, San Min Ju uh, So let's write that down. San Min. Is that right? Min. Ah, sorry. Ju. Yi. So, at any rate, the San Min Ju Yi, or the, the three principles of the people. And for those of us who are learning Chinese, I'll, I'll transcribe it for you. San Min Min Ju Yi. San Min Ju Yi, or the three principles. Oh, sorry. Third tone on Ju Ju. San Min Ju Yi. So the three principles of the people. Okay, and this was his blueprint for a prosperous, strong, and democratic China. So let's take a look at each of these three principles in detail, okay? So the first principle is Minzu, okay, Minzu, which translates more or less as nationalism. Now, I don't like that translation personally. I don't like to translate the first principle as nationalism because that kind of has a bad connotation in the West, almost maybe a little racist even, right? Uh, and that was never present in Sun Yat-sen's ideology. A more uh, accurate translation might be this, people's nation. Okay, and people's nation was the idea that there's this Chinese national identity and this national pride regardless of ethnic group. So that is a Manchu or a Tibetan or someone or that is a, an ethnically or linguistically Manchu or Tibetan had every right to call themselves Chinese just as much as a Mandarin speaker from Beijing. And that was a quite revolutionary concept at the time. Now, I like this principle because it applies to me too. You know, I've always had daydreams about settling down in the ROC and getting naturalized as a dual citizen and maybe looking like a foreigner but really being just as Chinese as everyone else. And Sun Yat-sen would have been totally down with that. He would have been totally on board with it. And I think that that it, it's it's really cool to think about that, that uh, this is a nation that is really multi-ethnic in the same way that the United States is. And I think that's something that a lot of people forget. Now, the second principle is Min Chuan, okay, which means people's rule. Okay. And that is democracy. So Sun's great hope was that he would see China one day develop into a genuine democracy where people could express themselves freely and choose their leaders. In the end, he never accomplished this dream within his lifetime, but he did lay the groundwork as the Republic of China's first president 
And now we have a genuine multi-party democracy in the Republic of China, that is to say Taiwan. And on the mainland too, even things are getting better every day. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be the first one to wear a free Tibet t-shirt in Tiananmen Square, but it will get there someday. And I have faith. And, and honestly, it's, it's wonderful to live in China right now because you're seeing this the so much positive change happening every day. You know, good will always triumph over evil. Freedom will always triumph over tyranny. And I believe that someday Sun's dream of a, a, a strong, united, prosperous and free China will come true. Uh, you know, the, I think the, the current parlance is the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And I, I genuinely believe that will happen someday. Now, the third principle is min, uh, min sheng, okay? Min sheng, which means people's livelihood, okay? People's livelihood, and basically, this means socialism, all right? And a highly developed social welfare system for those members of society who need an extra hand. Now, I personally think socialism is a great idea within the framework of a free democracy. So Dian Sen thought so too, and believed a fairer and more equitable society was possible. Okay, And while under Sun Yat-sen's vision, people do have the opportunity to become successful through hard work, weaker members of society are also taken care of, and that's something I'm very much down with. I think everybody should be down with it. China is a huge country with enormous nat natural resources, and there's, there's plenty to go around, and Sun Yat-sen understood that. Okay, so that's why Sun Yat-sen is my hero. Uh, you should totally check him out. He was a cool guy. And those are my bro Sun Yat-sen's three principles of the people. Okay, that wraps up not only today's discussion, but my whole series on badass historical Chinese bros. All right, so up next, we're going to have a really cool series, and that is the origins of Chinese civilization. So I hope everyone will join me for that. See you next time. Bye, guys.